Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. This is a Sosa once again, and it's actually just turned 12 noon. So I just wanted to say good morning before it turned 12.01. <laughs> Running a little behind today, a lot of stuff going on. But um, yeah, concerning a lot of the stuff going on, <laughs> just saw a post today about the FBI raiding uh, a clinic or a facility, whatever, that was basically giving vitamin C out to people and uh, they were posting about it and people were getting healed and so the FBI raided it. So definitely check my personal Facebook page about that if you want to see the insight um, and the links and the medical research about how vitamin C um, can help the immune system to fight. Um, it's really crazy what's going on right now, but hey, we're going to hold on and we're going to outlast the enemy. We're going to outlast the devil. Uh, one word that came to me this morning was that, you know, sometimes when you're dealing with the Python spirit, you know, something huge, some dragon satanic, <laughs> um, some dragon satanic python, you know, reptile spirit that's kind of wrapping around, you know, the world and trying to establish control. If you look in nature, you know, I just did a quick Google search, like what animals kill snakes. And the first animals that came up were birds of prey. And if you look in the scriptures and you see, you know, some of the prophetic language, you see that the eagle kind of represents the prophetic ministry. Um, and so eagles kill snakes. And sometimes you can't really wrestle with pythons. You can't go back and forth with these, you know, python spirits and, you know, debating and arguing you know, with these people um, that believe what the Python is telling them and the Python is squeezing them and literally killing them. And you can't you can't wrestle with the Python. You have to use the prophetic anointing. You have to make some declarations. You have to use prayer. You have to use your testimony. You have to um, Bible talks about how the spirit of um, the testimony, the, the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. Right, so you have to use prophetic testimony. You have to use the prophetic anointing in order to defeat these Python spirits. So just wanted to throw that throw that out to you real quick. You know, don't back down. Um, don't let, you know, COVID-19 and all the deception uh, kill you or kill anyone else. You know, use the prophetic spirit. Use the power in the word of God. Speak the word of God and, um, and use natural wisdom. So this question came maybe about a year and a half, two years ago, maybe. I'm just trying to go back to the old questions to catch up. This question says, hey, hope all is well with you and the whole family. I was reading through your post, and those are some of your FB friends, and per usual, I have a question, LOL. Regarding the use of the name of Jesus, I'm beginning to wonder if you have to use his Hebrew or Aramaic name and to actually be saved. It is, is this true? If that's the case, does that mean that people who call on the name of Jesus, not Yeshua, Yeshua, etc are not really saved or that the people who only knew the name jesus jesus and died before learning the original names are in hell because they didn't use the specific name and all this new reading and knowledge i get i get so scared and discouraged that it's never going to be enough unless i learn ancient hebrew and go back to their old ways of doing things it's so mentally and emotionally draining that i almost want to shy away from it all not from God, but from constantly learning all these new to me things that I seem to be doing wrong. So, yeah, that's a very heartfelt question. People learning new things and like, man, I didn't know this. Am I going to hell? Because I didn't know that his name was spelled, you know, Yeshua instead of Jesus. Um, and people and like this question came in, you know, she gets people get weary. Um, she gets weary. She got weary of hearing all these new things like, man, am I supposed to? You know, am I going to, was I going to hell before I knew this? You know, did my grandma go to hell because she didn't pronounce it right, right? Um, and so the Bible says in the last days that knowledge shall increase. And that's definitely something that we know. Knowledge shall increase. A lot of things have been hidden and things are coming to the light. And that's a great thing. Everything hidden shall be revealed. Jesus says that, right? Um, I think I had a scripture wrong. I think it's Luke 12. Let me edit this right quick. But another thing the scripture talks about is that if when knowledge um, can puff up your head, but love will build you up. And so true knowledge 
Um, when it's mixed with love, it's used to build people up, not to condemn people or to make them think, um, you know, that they're wrong for no reason, right? A true person that's knowledgeable of the law will not try to condemn you for the language you speak, but try to convict you into keeping the commandments of the Father and the Son. And that's where the important part is. The important part is the commandments, because if you look in the scriptures, who was, it, who was the one that confused the languages? It was God himself. So language is not as important as the actual commandments of God. Um, so yes, it's true, you know, the Y-H-U-H -H or uh, Y-H-W-H, -H, how what people, um, the spelling of the name of God and Yahusha and all that stuff, that's awesome, it's beautiful. The original Hebrew language, it's a beautiful thing. Actually, it's the source of all the alphabets is, is Hebrew, okay? Um, but, you know, Jesus actually came to preach the gospel. To Jesus actually came to give the gospel to other ethnicities, to other Gentile nations. And that was the reason that the Judeans hated his ministry. They hated the ministry of Jesus because, and they hated the ministry of his apostles because they actually brought the gospel to other nations and they elevated Jesus over Moses. They elevated Jesus over Abraham. You know, um, so they elevated elevated Jesus over the Hebrew in the Hebrew language, and they elevated Jesus over Moses uh, and, you know, the covenant of Moses. So um, I would never try to condemn anyone for, uh, you know, say, speaking an English language or a Greek language or a Teutonic language or French or Spanish or whatever. As long as you know who he is, because his name represents his character. Who is he? The Father is our creator, right? Who is Jesus? He is our savior. He's the one that died on the tree and rose again. There's only one person who's done that, and that's his name. His name really represents his authority and his character. And if you look up what a name re really is, it really stands for your authority and character. Because somebody could be named Jesus, you know, or somebody could be, you can, somebody could be named Jesus, or somebody can be named Joshua, you know, um, Joshua that came after Moses, right? Do you call on his name to be saved? Joshua and, and Yahshua are the same name. But which name are you calling when you're saved? You're calling on the one who rose from the dead. <laughs> that's his name. You're calling on the one who died on a tree and rose from the dead. And that's what a name really means. Um, so your name is really your identity and your character. So if you know the creator and you know the savior and you call on his name, you're saved. Um, so we can't use all this knowledge to try to condemn people and try to um, prove that we're better than people. We have to use knowledge to enlighten people and bring them back to the commandments of the father and the commandment of the son. I'll put some links to the, at the end of this, um, this blog to couple of articles that go further and deeper on this subject. One is called Cultural Name Calling the Names of God and Languages of the People of God. Um, the next one is called Saved Israelites versus YouTube Israelites. The next one is called What is Taking Yah's Name in Vain? Those, all three of those blogs are on selfspression.com. You can search the, the title of those, you go to selfspression.com and search the title of those blogs and you'll see more insight on that. So. Thanks again. Appreciate you for tuning in. Whenever you're tuning in, thanks for thanks for watching. Please, if this is interesting to you, or if you know somebody who wants the answer to this question, please share it and let people know. Thanks.